Hello, my name is Andre Leshensif. I'm the treasurer for America for Technocratic Action. It's a political action committee. And I guess I am is trying to establish a technocratic party in the United States. And today we're going to briefly talk about the political spectrum at 101. It's a brief uh, talk about that. And where does the technocratic party fits in relations to Democrats and Republicans? And I hope you will learn something new uh, and discover something about the politics that uh, how it is not just the left and right uh, you know access it's not the left against right it's much more sophisticated than that and um, I hope you enjoy it thank you so welcome back and I'm going to continue describing the political spectrum one on one so a traditional sense, as everybody knows, we have the left and the right. So this would be this, this graph. So we have the left here, you know, left. And we have the right over here, right? And, and the idea is that this y-axis is more government and then there's less government, less authority, more authority. And so one can argue that the Democrats are here, right? And the Republicans are here. Uh, so, and each Democrat or Republican, they either want more government or they want less government. The problem with this is that, well, that's not necessarily true. It's obviously we have political individuals that either want more government or less government, more welfare, less welfare, more you know, liberty for individual, more corporate, more... Uh, social, but in reality, it's much more complicated. So in reality, we have, on the left, we have, well, let's, let's try to rephrase the left and right this moment. We'll, we'll understand why more. So we have the socialists here, socialists. Then we have the capitalists on our right. And then we have the liberals at the bottom. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We could, we could move it around. That's not what matters. And liberals on the bottom. And then we have conservatives. Conservatives on top. Conservatives, right? We have conservatives. Now, if you think about Republicans as their... Oh, as well, if you think about Republicans as a Republican base, they're somewhere around here, right? This is their spectrum so they, they they tend to take this uh quadrant so we can call this i'm not sure what the was this quadrant one or i think it's quadrant one right for mathematic one two and three four anyways they're in this quadrant and uh, they're generally more conservative right they're they're so they operate from that kind of so we got conservatives which are religion religion is a conservation conservative spectrum anything that deals with that and we can dwell on a little more later but right now we have the republicans which are somewhere around around, around in this neighborhood right in this neighborhood deliver on here some you know definitely more conservative but they're more capitalist and they obviously overlap into socialists they overlap there uh, because um well they support welfare programs and you know, Medicare, Medicaid, and all that stuff. Obviously, they're not against uh, a reasonable um, adjustment to social security. Now, we have Democrats. Okay. We have, we have Democrats, which are over here. We call them D, a little too big. But, anyways, they have D, which is Democrats, right? So, and they kind of live in this spectrum. So they're in the room of the socialists, and then they have liberals over here. Right? So they're more liberal and they're more socialist. They're more willing to help the brother out, so to speak, and they're more welfare oriented. They want a more dynamic, more, more flexible uh, government rule, more government, so to speak, for making sure the welfare uh, is there for people in the state. And then they obviously overlap to here as well. Because you know they're not against corporations, not really necessarily against businesses, but their base, their base of politics is really rooted into you know social justice, civil rights kind of deal, uh, where Republicans are more 
individual and capitalist. And before I get to technocrats, I want to talk about this little guys. I'll call them F. I don't know, F failed, whatever. And fascists. And these guys live here. It's probably more extreme. So, um, but can they overlap uh, to capitalism? Absolutely, they can overlap to capitalists. And uh, they may overlap here, but for other reasons, right? So they're, they're like this. So fascists, the Nazis, the Nazis they're basically uh, would be a perfect example. Anyone, because they're conservative and they're socially oriented, right? You know, patriotic for Germans, all that stuff. And uh, usually this is not, uh, not the best spot to be for any political party, um, unless you're into extremism. So anyways, coming back to socialists, so like, like if you're here, that would be your communists, right? So you're a communist happy guy. If you're conservative, well, for you, it'd be a religion, right? Perfect religion, monarchy, oligarchy, and Sharia law, you know? Liberals, well, anarchy, right? We got anarchy, and we got um, liberalist, libertarian movement, you know, really just, limited less less government or or maybe more government and now we have capitalists which are a bunch basically oligarch we have oligarch and and a bunch of other guys oligarchs with capitalism uh group of a few right and old technocrats technically one can say the old understanding of technocracy can be applied to that group of few experts. Now, uh, right, just gonna see. now here are the technocrats, right? So they're in this little spectrum. All right, so technocrats are really little capitalists. So that implies, you know, obviously we also overlap for socialism and we overlap for conservatism. But we're in this kind of spectrum. This is our quadrant. Democrats, Republicans, and technocrats. We want to have strong businesses so that we ensure our liberties. Now, how does that quite work? Well, that's that's more of a... that discussion can be for another day, but at the end of the day, I just want, this, uh, want you to describe to show you where the, in terms of political spectrum, where we are. Uh, we are applying the capitalist free market, so to speak, and the government plays a role to get our liberties through this quadrant, less socialism, more liberalism and capitalism. A free person is the one that makes money or earns living in abundance, so to speak, rather than one gets government subsidies. So, and I, Let's quickly. So I hope you understand where we fit and why the left and right doesn't quite work. Because this isn't left, this isn't right. This is much more complicated. And we can go even deeper and try to explain that, in fact, if you can imagine, it's a three-dimensional, and now you have like a Z coordinate, right? More authority and less authority. So if you go here, let me, let me quickly draw this for you, right? So this is where Republicans are, Democrats, technocrats, fascists, and a lot of extremists. Or, I don't really mean this is a fascist, but in general, one can argue that one can argue that this could be a fascist. And then we have more authority, less authority. And you, like at Republicans, they can be, be over here. Right? They all say less government, but you can still be a Republican, but want to have more government. And same can be said about Democrats. You can be a Democrat, but want to have less government. So it's really, and you can have a second one, same, same thing, right? So you can have a soft, soft fascism. You know, you can have a low government, but still kind of have that principle. So anyways, uh, this, this allows you to hopefully understand where technocrats are in relationship to democrats and republicans why this is important to understand where we actually sort of missing a link so there is no 
connection between the Republicans and Democrats over here. Because if they're in not, not basically don't live here, which you end up having, where it really could, could be some with, well, I just, I'm just gonna call it because it's gonna be $20 trillion of debt, right? And then you pay, let's say 350 to 450 billion every year in your interest rate to your debt. So imagine how much funding or social or welfare, whatever you want, or a capitalist approach to empower our individualism for 450 million every year. We could literally go to Mars yesterday. If we really wanted to, if we just negated our debt, we'd be in surplus. Um, so anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully, if you have any questions, you know, contact, and I'll be happy to answer them. Please uh, visit our Facebook, and you'll find fellow technocrats there. But just in general, it's important to understand that uh, you, this isn't left and right. If this could be top and bottom. It's, it's really is about this perspective this, that, and uh, I'm actually going to quickly, quickly, and you know, yeah. So if I quickly erase these guys, I can, well, it's not quite working as intended. Anyways, it's good enough, right? Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, it's good. So one can argue, well, not some argue, but anyways, one can say that every politics kind of started here, you know, through the conservatives. Monarchy, tribal system, all of that really came from conservatism. And it's not until Renaissance Right, Renaissance age, or along the lines of going toward where humanity started to get more liberal in their views, you know, because religion started to lose its power, so conservatism wasn't exactly mainstream anymore. So as we started to lose our liberal we got ideas, right? So now we have this pathway. Remember, plus if you still keep the three-dimensional stuff in mind, and you have up and down. But let's just keep it in two two D for now. And then we have the merchants, and I just want to step back a little quickly. See, you, you had people who were thinking liberal and socialist, but the problem is they weren't politically um, attuned in such a way because try to do those things, you're most likely going to get killed or someone else, particularly and during monarchy or something like that. So, and we know what happened during the French Revolution, monarchs got whacked. Whacked. <clears throat> anyway, so now we have the rise, so now that we no longer have conservatives, we give rise to capitalism. Capitalism, exciting. The only problem here, the more we had capitalism, the more we had exploitation of people. So that people like, oh man, now that we change from conservative, maybe we can do other things. So people started to go, you know, more liberal and socialism. Well, the United States has obviously pursued the liberal concept, while we know what happened the rest of the world. So it was nat naturally to go back to liberalism where capitalism was there for quite a while, right? And we've had significant progress and now taxes were low, which is interesting, right? Anyways, and um, but as more demand for government and revolution in, in uh, Russian empire happened, we get communism. So we go here back to here and now we have socialists now we have a political spectrum of socialists so if you imagine it was always like this now we have socialists government basically taking care of thing and everyone does government's bidding and government is always right Ahem. so now we got this cross and because because capitalism was so bad and because the united states had to prove that it also could provide socially and there was a push politically for socialism, we got some socialism. But in the end of the day, we kind of never really dwelled here, or rather we dwelled here in the beginning. One can say if there was a moment 
of the United States or the origin of the United States, this is the, this is the origin. This is like the, this is the founding fathers 101. But the problem here, they were still conservative. Obviously, non-interventions, none of those things. Uh, so in the end, it really came down to them sticking to their beliefs and their, their understanding of the government during that time. And but what's important to understand is if in the current time we're more closer to founding fathers in this sector, right? We this is where we should be, not here. Well, but look, I just want to not I'm not saying that this is wrong and this is wrong. Those are all reasonable policies to have, and they serve a particular role in the United States and our government. We're not trying to remove any of them. We're just trying to enter this political spectrum where technocrats, it could be another name, you know, this is not a monopoly. Uh, there could be other people, but fundamentally, this is where you want to be uh, as a potential uh, third party in the United States. Anyway, this is all uh, I wanted to say. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.